Welcome to the Block Party. My name is Seth Kushner. And last time I had this man on the show in June, there were two things that weren't true. One of them was Barclay was not a Stanley Cup champion and I had never watched Prison Break. So we're going to get to the most important thing first. Barclay Goodrow, I watched Prison Break. And? Um, well, I... Well, I watched the first episode and a half. I, I had to get in here to do the interview with you, but I am a fan. When we talked last in June, you really gave me a hard sell on the show, and I didn't start watching it until today when I knew I'd have you on again. But I'm very, very impressed with the first episode and a half. So thank you for getting me onto that. I want you. To, I want you to be impressed that I watched it today. I guess the sell wasn't hard enough if it took what like eight months for you to get into it. Um, <laughs> you know, twelve I, months. You, no, you had me so fired up about it, and then I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this, and then I think I just totally got caught up in doing other things, which is probably just sitting in my room, staring at the wall. But then I dug in today and I'm very, very happy. I did. Even my wife was like, what are you doing? And I said, watching prison breaks. I'm interviewing Barclay today. And she goes, wow, you must not have a lot going on right now. So yeah, my wife's not happy about it, but I, I want you to be. All right. I'm very happy. I'm interested to see what you think about it. Um, are, episode and a half. I mean, I mean, I think that the lead character, he's a little bit too cool for like going into jail and he's walking around trying to get his insulin blocking pills and trying to be friends with everybody and getting in fights. So I feel like he's a little too cool for like going to shoot up a bank, trying to get into prison, but I respect him trying to get his brother out. I can, yeah. I, I, have, I have a brother. He's not a criminal, but maybe I would try to do the same thing if I was smart. Yeah. It's all part of the plan. Now, do I stay, you said there was like four seasons last time. I, do I only stay locked in for one season or do I need to see this all the way through? I mean, the first season's the the money season. It's it kind of falls off a little bit after that, but the first season you'll you'll be locked in. Okay, I'm I'll be locked in. Um, so let's talk about last time you were on. I don't even you had played like maybe eight or nine games for the Lightning. Um, you're getting ready, I think, to start skating again before you went off to the bubble. I was thinking about it, and really, just up until a few weeks ago, you had never had had played in front of a a home crowd in Tampa Bay. So. The last year from getting traded to, to now, has that been the craziest year of your life? Uh, for sure. I think I'd, I had played maybe four home games um, before the pause. So okay. I, did, I did get a few in. Um, but yeah, for sure. From, from getting traded to obviously the pandemic happening to quarantine to going to the bubble and then winning a Stanley cup. It was, it was a crazy six, seven months. And to think, uh, you know, that was, it all started right around a year ago, a year, a year and a bit ago is, is insane to think about. Does it, does it, it feel like you've been with the team for five years? It does. It really does. It's, you know, I think the, the bubble aspect kind of, it was two months, but it, felt like it was a lot longer than that and you know when you spend so much time with the guys and you see them every day all day it just you know they, it doesn't seem like you're you know a new teammate it seems like you, you've been there for a lot longer so it's uh that was good because obviously when you come back this year it uh it doesn't feel like it's my you know second season with the team it feels like i've, I've been here a lot longer what was uh, what was your takeaway from the bubble? Do you feel like that's something you could do again if the NHL wanted to do that this year? Do you feel like you you had enough of it and you would love to kind of just do a traditional play at home if you can? Yeah, I think uh, I think the bubble would kind of be the last resort if if you asked all the guys. It was it wasn't the most ideal uh, circumstance. Obviously, that was the only way it could have been done um, last year. And the uh, I think the NHL and the NHLPA did, did a great job in, in putting putting it together and making it work for everyone and making it as uh, you know enjoyable as it could be for for guys being away from their families and kids and, and everything. So it was uh, it was good, um, but it's not something that uh, you know everyone's jumping to to get back into. When you guys won and right before you got handed the cup and, and you touched it and you, what were, what was, what was going through your mind? Um, I don't know. Like it was a whole lot and a whole, a whole lot and also a whole lot of nothing. It's, you know, <laughs> you're, you're trying to stay in the moment as much as you can, but it's, you know, it's kind of, you see, you know, a life, lifelong dream kind of being fulfilled and it's it's a pretty surreal moment because you're you know you you dream of that moment but it's also you know growing up as a kid it's also such a, a distant thing and something that 
you know, it, it feels like a dream. And as you, you know, you get closer, you know, by making it to the professional, making it to the NHL, you know, you, you are kind of checking off, you know, the boxes as you go and um, to be able to lift the, the Stanley Cup was, was an insane moment, obviously. And it was, you know, something that it makes, just makes you want to relive because it feels like the, the time didn't last long enough and you just want to, you know, it kind of drives you to, to push harder to win it again. I want to talk about the boat parade. Everybody loved it. It was an epic event. Uh, I'm sure it was really, you, you got a really good chance to, to see everybody from Tampa being out there. How did you go about picking out what you were going to wear for that day? Because you wore a classic Penny Hardaway Orlando Magic throwback. Was it just like, hey, it's going to be hot. I got to throw something on like a tank top or you wanted to wear that uh, that day for some sort of special reason? Uh, no, it was just um, Matthew Joseph said it, his buddy was getting him a, a basketball jersey. And I've always been a, uh, a big jersey guy you know whenever i'm you know, doing something outside in the summer i love just wearing a jersey so i thought it'd be a little fitting to to throw on an orlando jersey i'm i'm really a raptors fan and you know a raptors raptors guy but i think for for that moment it was uh seemed right putting on the orlando jersey and it uh it was it was a crazy day it was a lot of fun and, <laughs> What was the, what's the highlight when you think back to what you can remember? Was it the boat parade? Was it getting to Raymond James stadium? I, I was at Raymond James stadium when it started to get dark and all you guys started to get there. It just seemed like it was complete chaos. Very enjoyable. What, what do you remember from that day? Yeah, it was, I think just that whole day, like as a whole, just, you know, from the, from the morning when we took the team picture with, with the Stanley cup and then, you know, taking the, the trolleys over to the boats, getting on the boat, seeing, you know, you slowly start seeing the fans, uh, you know, line up along the water and then the parade starts and, you know, everyone's just going crazy. There's <laughs> just drinks flying everywhere. You're having a phenomenal time and then you get to the stadium and, you know, I think that was, it was, it was just crazy because you see so many people, everyone's going nuts when they see the cop. It's, you know, it's something about people's reactions when they when they see see the Stanley Cup in person is it's pretty cool. So I think you know that whole day as a whole was so uh, so well put together, and it was for sure a day that you know none of us will will ever forget. You know what it is, and just speaking as a fan who got to experience it this year, I feel like it's the Stanley cup is you guys make it the city, like the, by the way that you guys take it around and let everybody, I mean, you know, what people were drinking out of it that night or just getting to touch it or the way that it travels, it feels like it's everybody's trophy. It doesn't feel like it's that way for other sports. So, I mean, maybe that that's the reaction. It almost feels like, Hey, this is for you guys too, or you guys helped us with this. That's at least what it felt like. I know we didn't help you guys on the ice, but that's the takeaway, which is an incredible feeling for us fans. Yeah. I think. And also when you, when we won in a fashion that we did when, you know, being away from the fans and them not uh, being able to experience, you know, the, the games in front of them or the games, you know, just around the corner from, from where they live. It's, it was cool to bring the cup home. And you know, I think for sure the Stanley cup is the, the coolest trophy in sports, just with the, the tradition and, you know, everyone's name on it. That's, that's won it, you know, it's, it's uh, it's not like a new trophy has been made every year and you, and you just, you know, get a new one. It's, you know, you're lifting something that, you know, a guy 50 years ago has lifted and, you know, there's legends on that thing. So to be able to, you know, lift the same, the same cup that, you know, Wayne Gretzky and all these guys have lifted, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. How did you stay so focused in the bubble during the Stanley Cup final in the playoffs, especially when Yanni Gord was rocking that atrocious mustache on their, your line? Was it hard for you to even look at him seriously, or you could kind of block that out when you were actually playing? Uh, you know, it's funny. Like, you get you just – when you're with them every day, it's – you become so used to, um, you know, the beards on guys. It's it's a gradual thing. You see, you see it from day one, and by the time you get to day – 60 or 70 it just it seems so fitting on guys so it, it's when it's when guys start shaving that and cutting their hair it's like holy like you everyone looks totally different without uh without the playoff madness going on uh, what what do you think when you landed on tmz this year i forget the tmz actually has a sports section and i couldn't believe it How, how'd you find out that you landed on there uh for what 
Oh, you didn't know that you were on TMZ this year? Oh. No, for the uh, Adam Ernie fight. I guess that they have like TMZ Sports, so they had you on there for for your punch. That's breaking news to you? Yeah, I didn't, yeah, I didn't know that. Wow, you really stay offline. How do you do that? Like, I don't. I see that you're not too active on social media. You just got other things going on, or are you kind of on there on secret usernames? Oh no, I'm on there. It's, I mean, what they just posted the video, or yeah, yeah, TMZ Sports. They got it on there, so they called you a good guy. That the way that you held him up. <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh, you know, you never want to see that uh, happen, especially in a fight. So, I mean, I wish I could say I intentionally held him up but i think everything happened so fast and just the way my hand was on his jersey i was i'm glad i'm glad it worked out the way it did i wouldn't wouldn't want to see his head hit the ice and you know it's it's tough when when that happens in a fight well there you go he does not barkley good did not know that he was on tmz sports i'm glad i could break that. i didn't even know tmz had a sports until i saw that so we're all learning stuff what do you think about when you saw that guy and i know you retweeted it who got the stanley cup tattoo and i believe your face or body was one of the ones that made it onto the, the guy's leg or something. What, what was, is that your first tattoo on somebody else that you know of? Yeah, that I know of. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, it's got to be the only one. I mean, it. I think he's got his whole arm done with everyone's faces on there. So, I mean, that's a pretty, it's a pretty diehard uh, fan to to commit to doing that and putting uh, you know the whole team's faces on their body. It's pretty well done I think you know everyone looks pretty pretty similar to how they look in real life is it crazy or is it just dedication or is it both it's got to be a bit of both okay uh Barclay <laughs> what was it like being honored by your hometown or at least I know that they put like you know home of Stanley Cup champion Barclay Goodbro what was that like for you when they told you that they were going to do that when it was finally revealed yeah it was uh it was cool there was I was able to uh, meet with the mayor. Um, I mean, I'm from a pretty small town. The population is probably around 50,000. Um, but uh, yeah, it was cool. I, I met the mayor. He gave me, uh, you know, a, a key to the town or whatever. So that was cool. <laughs> and to uh, to have our, my name on on every, uh, you know, welcome to Aurora sign, home of Stanley Cup champion, Barkley Goodrow. It's, it's pretty cool and uh yeah it's nice it's nice seeing that every time i drive into the town unfortunately i don't i don't live in the town anymore i'm 25 30 minutes away but you know whenever i go see my parents or, or see some buddies I, I can see that sign oh so your parents are there still so they get to take pictures and tell everybody that you know they get to go bring the elder relatives by that sign still yeah yeah I, I think they get a little more enjoyment out of it than i do for sure i say so is your dad on twitter he is yeah yeah I saw he's very active. He's pretty good at Twitter, I got to say. Yeah, I think he's a, he's a lot more active than I am, for sure. <laughs> he is. That's why I thought that you weren't even on social media, but I'm glad that you're there. You're lurking. Nobody just tells you that you're on TMZ, which is totally cool. Uh, Barclay, since we talked about that kind of everything happened, you know, a year plus ago when you got traded, and it, it was, of course, your first time being dealt, what's something that you didn't know about being traded until it actually happened to you? Um... Didn't know. Um, Just anything that surprised you about the process? Or was it just like you thought, I, hey, you get traded, next team on the phone, boom, and I'm there? Yeah, I know. I think it's – there wasn't really any surprises. I think I was just kind of – you know, it's it just everything happened so quickly. I think that's, that's the main thing. Like you go from being on one team for, you know, whether it was a short amount of time or a long period of time and then – you know, within a couple minutes that's over and done with and you're on a new team and you're living in a different city and packing up all your things, which I, I didn't even, from the time I was traded, I, I haven't been back to San Jose or anything. So it's, you know, you go, I left my, the place where I was living um, just to go on a road trip. I figured you know, I'd be home in a week and <laughs> <laughs> next thing you know, I've never seen that place again. So it's just, <laughs> It's crazy to think of it in that sense, but um, there's so many people around that you know are able to help you out and, and to lend you know resources and stuff that make the the transition a lot easier. So it was it was pretty uh, it was a pretty smooth transition, and but it's definitely uh, it's a whirlwind for a couple of days for sure. You didn't leave like any small animals or anything like in your old place in, in San Jose, did you? 
No, I didn't, um, which I'm glad at the time I didn't have any animals that uh, needed to be transported across the country. Thank God. Are you are you still a Vanderpump Rules guy? Last time that you were on, you talked about it was kind of your guilty pleasure. Have you picked up another one? Did you finish that series? What's going on? Uh, yeah, I think I I think I did finish it. Um, I don't even know if they're – that was kind of like a quarantine thing. You know, you've, you've run through every – every other option and you're looking for things to occupy the time um are you watching as much tv now because are you guys still kind of in lockdown when you travel to a different city yeah like we don't uh we don't leave the hotel at all we pretty much we're hotel and rink so there's a lot of downtime a lot of yeah still watching a lot of tv shows <laughs> um, What's good? Tell us. We talked a lot about it last time. What? Give me, give me something that I can watch. You know, eight months from now, that I'll promise you that I'm going to watch today. Did you pick up anything new? Um, I don't know. I've I'm a big documentary guy. Okay. I, I'm always coming to the rink asking guys if they've seen a certain documentary or, or suggesting something. So like conspiracy uh, stuff or just just anything you can learn. Yeah, just like crime, crime documentaries, true crime. Um, big fan of so. I can't really think of any off the top of my head, but who who chats you up the most about your documentaries? I maybe Kalorn. I he feel, I feel like maybe he watches some. Who who on the team can give you a good conversation about documentaries? Um, yeah, I think uh, Kalorn watches watches a bunch. Um, who else watches them? I don't even know. I feel like I just you feel like you're on your own. Whoever, whoever <laughs> wanted to listen about it. <laughs> Um, did you get to spend your day with the cup? I know not a lot of guys got to do that. Did you get to have your day with it or is that going to happen after this year? Uh, no, I didn't. Um, it was something where, you know, we could have had a day with it, um, but that would, you know, involve coming um, back to Tampa. And then if I wanted to go back to Canada, you'd have to quarantine for, for two weeks. Um, and then to get, you know, my, family and everyone to Tampa would would be pretty tough so um I think we're we're hoping to to get a day with it this summer but um who knows what what the circumstances by that time will be so um yeah who knows I think uh you know the we're trying to we're trying to win it again and hopefully it's it's not an issue do you like the the layout for the league this year, the way that you're kind of playing, you know, the same teams just in your division over and over again? Are, are you looking to get back out there and travel the whole country, not just a part of it next season? Um, Yeah, it's it'd be nice to play some other teams. I think, uh, you know, playing the same team eight times uh, in a season can get, you know, a little a little old sometimes. Um, and it's but the way they, they've worked the schedule when, you know, the travel is a lot less with, you know, playing the same team a couple times. Um, like we, we come to Columbus today, we play them twice and then we go to Nashville and play them twice. So you're not traveling, you're playing the same amount of road games, but you're not traveling as much um, in between. So I think that's been, that's been one of the, the better parts of it. I think the, you get more, more rest and more recovery when, you know, if you're on a four game road trip, you're only, you know, flying, you know, once to the city and then one more time to the different city, you're not flying three times in between. So I think from that aspect, it, it's been, it's been good, but it definitely would be, would be nice to play um, some other teams. And it's hard, it's just hard, it's hard to get a feel around the league, but what, you know, certain teams are doing when you don't see them all, all year and then, you know, come, third round of playoffs you're playing from that um you haven't played in who knows how long over a year uh barclay are those games you guys just came off a couple of uh, a noon game and a one o'clock game or is it hard for you to kind of you know adjust your schedule to playing earlier in the day or is it you're ready to go whenever and that's no issue for you uh i like it i like playing early games i think you know when you can just get up and there's no you know, there's no morning skate. There's no, there's no nothing. You just get up. You don't really think about anything. You just, you know, have some breakfast and go play. It's, I like doing it. Some guys don't, um, some guys prefer playing at night, but, um, I feel like this year we've had, 
every time from <laughs> seven to eight. So it's like we've all gotten used to playing at different times. And so at this point, it's it's nothing new. It's, you know, whatever whatever time we're supposed to be ready, I think we're uh, we're become, becoming pretty used to it. Hey, listen, I'm with you. I'd want to play the game as early as possible, get it over with, and not have to, you know, sit around and think about it or kill time all day before the game. Uh, Barclay Goodrow, Stanley Cup champion, thank you so much for joining the block party again. I will uh, make sure that I finish Prison Break uh, before eight months from now or a year from now, and I'll get you some feedback on it. Thank you for turning me on to it, and thanks for coming on the show today, man. I appreciate it. All right, sounds good. Let me know.